Many of the jobs we do and the tools we use require something to be twisted or turned. An example here is the spanner turning the wheel nut. The force in this case is downward and the spanner is a long one, causing the nut to be twisted anti-clockwise. The force that's trying to stop it turning is the frictional force between the bolt and the nut. The bolt is relatively easy to turn because the spanner is a long one and the force applied is a long way from the turning point at the centre of the bolt, whereas the frictional force is only a tiny distance from the centre of the bolt. To measure this turning effect we use the idea of the moment of a force. That is how effectively a force is twisting something about the turning point. That turning point is often called a pivot or fulcrum. The calculation of the moment is reasonably straightforward. It is the perpendicular distance to the line of the force multiplied by the size of the force. So the distance multiplied by the size. Force is measured in newtons and the distance in metres, so the moment is measured in newton metres. So in the example that we've already seen, if the force here was 100 newtons and the distance from my hand to the centre is a quarter of a metre, the moment would be 100 multiplied by 0 0.25, which would be 25 newton metres. In calculating the moment, we use the phrase perpendicular distance and we need to explain what that means. In this example, the spanner has been repositioned so that it is at an angle facing upwards. The force that I'm applying is still vertically downwards. In effect, the length of the spanner has been reduced. The important distance is the one shown by the blue arrow from the pivot perpendicular to the line of the force. Now, perpendicular means at right angles too, so the angle shown must be 90 degrees. Another example of the importance of the perpendicular distance is something that many of you will be familiar with. If you press down on the pedal when it is at the top of its circle of movement, then the effect of pushing the bike forward is much less. That's because the force acting straight downwards is quite close to the fulcrum or pivot. The perpendicular distance is small, so the moment of the force is small. When the pedal is in this position, the turning effect is much greater. The perpendicular distance between the direction of the force and the pivot or fulcrum is much larger. And therefore, the moment of the force is much larger. This last example does not look like a turning force at first glance, but the forces are turning about the pivot at the centre of the wheel. The load in the barrow is twisting the barrow downwards, whereas the force on the handles is pulling it up. The distance between the direction of the load and the pivot is small, but the distance between the line of force on the handles and the pivot is large. Because of this larger distance, the force needed to lift the load around that pivot is relatively small. This diagram shows a typical classroom setup to investigate moments and the law of moments. We use a regular uniform ruler or stick balanced in the centre with a known weight on one side and we use that to measure an unknown weight on the other side. To calculate the value of that unknown weight, we use the law of moments. The law of moments states that for balance, that is for equilibrium, the clockwise moments are equal to the anti-clockwise moments. Remember that a moment is the force times the distance and the unknown force on the right hand side is pulling the ruler around clockwise. So that is the clockwise moment. The known force in this case on the left hand side will be pulling the ruler around anti-clockwise. If we balance the ruler so that it is level and steady then it is in equilibrium and in this state the twisting forces clockwise, the clockwise moment, are equal to the twisting forces anti-clockwise, that is the anti-clockwise moment. We can apply this law of moments to the relatively simple example of the barrow. 
The load pulls the barrow around anti-clockwise around the pivot. The lift pulls it back clockwise. If the perpendicular distance from the lift to the pivot is 1 meter, and from the load to the pivot 0.2 meters, and the value of the load is about 500 newtons, we can use those figures to calculate the force that is required, the lift that is required on the handles to balance the barrow, to lift the barrow. First, drawing this out as a simple diagram, the pivot on the right hand side, the load near the pivot pulling around anti-clockwise and the lift on the handles pulling around clockwise. The clockwise moments then are the value of the force of the lift multiplied by one meter. The anti-clockwise moments, the load 500 newtons times 0.2 meters. Since these two are balanced, they're in equilibrium, they must be equal. So the force times one equals 500 times 0.2. So the force is calculated at 100 newtons. Going back to the diagram we used to illustrate the law of moments, similar equipment has been set up here. A uniform 1 meter rule is balanced upon its center point at 500 millimeters. I'm using a rounded fulcrum or balance point, which may not be so accurately measured, but it's much easier to balance. For the sake of this demonstration, the unknown weight I'm using is a stapler which happened to be lying on the bench. I'm sliding it along the ruler to a convenient, easy to measure distance. I'm going to balance the whole thing up with a known one newton weight, which looks as if it says in, but is actually one newton. When you do this yourself, you can see it's a bit fiddly and you have to be careful not to move the balance point from the center of the rule. Once properly balanced, we check the measurements. The stapler, the unknown weight, is at the 650 millimeter mark. The balance point is still accurately at 500 millimeters and the known one newton weight is just on 10 millimeters. If we now transfer that to a diagram and calculate the value of the unknown weight. When you do things like this yourself, drawing a diagram may take a little more time, but it tends to ensure that you make fewer mistakes. So the balance point was at 500 millimeter the unknown weight was at 650 millimeters, and the known, the one newton weight, was at 10 millimeters. The distance, therefore, from the fulcrum, from the balance point, to the one newton weight is 490 millimeters, and from the fulcrum to the unknown weight is 150 millimeters. The unknown weight will pull the whole rule around the fulcrum clockwise. The moments therefore for that are the value of the unknown force times the distance, u times 0.15. For the anti-clockwise moment it is 1 newton multiplied by 0.49 meters. Since these are equal, it follows then that the value of the unknown weight is 0.49 divided by 0.15. Using this very sophisticated and expensive calculator, that comes to 3.27 newtons. Thank you for watching.